So I just want to make something super clear before I start this video. Everything in this is going to be speculation. I don't know when Fallout 5 is coming out. You don't know when Fallout 5 is coming out. I don't think anyone except people working at ZeniMax or Bethesda do know. But with that, let's explore some of the different theories out there, or really just one big theory, and I'll give my thoughts on that. So let me first start this with how the Fallout New Orleans speculation or hype or rumors or whatever started. On August 10th, there was a trademark filed for Fallout New Orleans, including a Fallout New Orleans logo, which is a very very generic Fallout logo just saying New Orleans under it. It's super simple, I could literally make that logo in probably 10 minutes in Photoshop and not really representative of this. What I think is more representative or more pertinent is actually the trademark filing itself. So basically we do have just a normal trademark filing, but what's important is it has four different classes. It's also been fast tracked and on top of all of the other stuff, it is filed with a primary language of English and a secondary language of French. So the whole fast track thing basically means when you submit a trademark, if you already have other trade marks that you have filed, it will go through the fast track process, basically shortening the processing time so they know you're like a legit individual. There are some other requirements, but I'm not going to get super in deep with that. The other important part to remember is that it costs money to file a trademark. In this particular one that falls under four different classes, if you put it on some of the different estimators on the EU IPL website, which is where this was filed, you'll find that it actually cost about 12, 13, or 1400 euros, depending on how you configure it. That's going to equate to about 15 to 1600 dollars or 1300 dollars. It's pretty negligible the difference the euro and the dollar are pretty close right now so that's a lot of money to spend for a hoax obviously that doesn't rule it out it definitely is possible or maybe this is bethesda just reserving the name or some other company reserving the name but still that's a lot of money 1300 isn't like okay haha i'm gonna make a joke right here like they're not gonna get that money back and it doesn't seem like they're profiting it off this in any way so it's just a little interesting tidbit to remember granted the trademark has yet to be approved so that doesn't really mean anything either but a lot of people are saying the trademark's a hoax or something like that, you really can't say that yet. The trademark has been filed and that's it. If it's rejected or approved, then we'll know more. But for right now, I don't think it's really safe to say this is real or fake. It just merely exists. So this is where the tinfoil hat part of this does go on. The trademark is filed in an English primary language and a French secondary language. So what exactly could that mean? Well, the rumor around town right now is basically that it's going to be Arcane Studios developing this game. Arcane Studios is another subsidiary of Zenimax. Zenimax is the parent company of Bethesda. It's also the parent company of Arcane Studios. And Arcane Studios has two different places. It has one in France and then one in Texas. The one in Texas has been posting some interesting job listings. Not super interesting, but definitely some senior positions. This is the type of thing you'll do when you start undergoing some heavy game development, which they are said to have a Prey game out in 2017, but who knows. That's very loose. I wouldn't really connect any heavy dots there. We'll know more once this trademark's approved or rejected. It's just kind of interesting. None of the other trademarks for any of the Fallout games because, well, I looked through them all, actually were listed on the EU Intellectual Property Office first. All the other ones were listed on the US one first. So it's kind of interesting for Fallout New Orleans or whatever this is to be listed on the EU one. I don't really know what that means. Again, just some more food for thought. So with all that being said, what would it actually look like if we got a Fallout New Orleans? When people think New Orleans, a lot of people do think Hurricane Katrina, but this wouldn't technically be real in the Fallout universe. Depending on how you look at this, the Fallout universe split apart from the real universe between the 40s and the 60s. So Hurricane Katrina, although it could have happened, technically didn't happen in the Fallout universe. Frankly, we don't really know. You could also make the argument that technically then a lot of the landmarks that exist there today wouldn't actually exist at all, but for the sake of kind of exploring what Fallout New Orleans will look like, I'll act like the landmarks will still be there, but Hurricane Katrina could be a hit or a miss. So there are four major things that popped out of me when I was looking through some of the different attractions for New Orleans. First and foremost, it does run across the Mississippi River. So the Mississippi River will be right there. Then we do have the French Quarter, the Aquarium of the Americas, and last but not least, we have Mardi Gras World. So let's talk a little bit about these. What is the French Quarter? Well, basically that's the founding part of New Orleans. So back all the way in the 16-1700s when it was just a piece of land, this is the initial piece of land, and then it later developed into a territory and corresponding settlements, etc, etc. Although even today, this remains a super relevant part of New Orleans. It has a lot of culture going on there, and more importantly, a lot of heritage. It's a huge tourist attraction, and was made into kind of like a town square type thing with a lot of different monuments and all that around it. That could be a really interesting place in the Fallout universe, obviously having some kind of either settlement there or just making it a really notable place with a lot of enemies. 
think the DC area in Fallout 3. There was tons of stuff going on there and a lot of places to explore, and there was always some really high level super mutants. The Aquarium of the Americas just seemed interesting to me. There's so many different possibilities. I would love to see some kind of like mini faction that are like fish people or people that are really attached to fish and their goal in life is to spread fish all over the world. Beyond that, it could just be some weird ghoulified area, maybe have some interaction with some of the different pools in the game. This is kind of more specific. Maybe it was just a little bit more, I hope. If there's a fall at New Orleans, they take advantage of the Aquarium of the Americas. It is a pretty large aquarium relative to, you know, like the country. It's not quite on par with something like Mall of America, but still a very large aquarium relative to the tri-state area. Mardi Gras world could be really cool. This is in real life New Orleans where all the floats are made today. So that could be some super cool interactions going around there. Same kind of concept with having a very distinct type of people there. Maybe individuals trying to hold on to the old world while the world around them is changing. And then last but not least, the most interesting part, for me at least, is the Mississippi River. So this will basically make New Orleans the home to a lot of swampland. And I think that could be why New Orleans is such a practical location. We have never seen a Fallout game in swampland. Fallout New Vegas was in the desert, Fallout 3 was in something else, Fallout 4 was kind of in a mix of like, it was desolate but kind of not at the same time, you had all little settlements everywhere. And then Fallout 5 or Fallout New Orleans, whatever you want to call it, could potentially be a massive swampland. Having all kinds of different walks of people in there, having swamp people, think like trappers except a little bit different. And although that kind of sounds shitty at first because like in the actual sense like who wants to walk around in a swamp all day, I think that could be really cool and I think it could be really appropriate for a post-apocalyptic setting. Although honestly I have no idea. I don't know if Fallout 5 is going to be coming out anytime soon. Something I do want to note though just for you guys as a little bit of a closing thought just to the validity of all these claims. Fallout 3 came out on October 28th, 2008. Fallout New Vegas came out on October 29th, 2010, so almost exactly two years later. The trademark for Fallout New Vegas was filed on October 5th, 2009, almost one year after the release of Fallout 3 and one year from the release of Fallout New Vegas. That system made Bethesda and Zenimax, more importantly, a ton of money. They built off the problems and complaints of Fallout 3, making it almost like a massive beta. I remember the first time I started playing Fallout New Vegas, I just thought, wow, all the things I downloaded mods to fix in Fallout 3 have been incorporated into the game. And obviously that system worked really well because Fallout New Vegas is a lot of people's favorite game, period. So are we going to see something similar now? This would be right around the time when they would be filing the trademark. So obviously that's really tinfoil hatty. I have no idea what's going to happen. I don't know if Bethesda or maybe Obsidian or Arcane Studios will be developing the game. Maybe it'll be someone else entirely. Maybe it won't be for five years, but who knows? I hope it's coming out soon. Those are just my thoughts. I wanted to lay everything out for you guys, especially considering now Fallout 4 is kind of over. We just got the last DLC and it's time to start moving on to other other things, whether that be mods or other games. So as always, I hope you guys did enjoy. I thank you all for watching this little video and I hope to see you all next time. Later.